We agree to in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to our online viewers, we say welcome and thank you for joining us this Sunday as we celebrate our pastor and Lady Kim's 31st appreciation celebration. Amen. Before we open, we're going to read the scripture. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. They looked upon him and were enlightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that feared him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. I read to your hearing Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. At this time, let us stand and receive Pastor Charles and Lady Kim Adams, Jr. Yeah. I gave up everything that 
the time we couldn't do this bad to the time. But let me go. Can you do it? Father, bless us that we can stand, one can stand without the other right now, Father. 
Father, then we come praying over our preacher today, Father. Yes. We are praying now that you just touch him right now, Father. Thank you for bringing him over the highway today, Father. Yes. We are praying now that you just be with him and keep him blessed his family as well right now, Father. Father, we are praying now that you just continue to go with us right now, Father. Bless us as we continue to go in your name right now, Father. Bless us on this holiday, Father. We ask right now that you just keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger right now, Father. We ask right now that you just continue to go with us and keep us right now, Father. Father, we just want to thank you right now, Father. We can't thank you enough because we had 10,000 tons. We couldn't even thank you right now, Father. We ask right now that you just be in the midst of this service right now, Father. We ask right now that you just let us let go and let God today, Father. We right now release all problems right now, Father. We release all anxieties right now, Father. We release all worries today right now, Father. We just release everything into your hands right now, Father. For we know that you have the hands that can hold anything right now, Father. We put it all in your hands today, Father. We ask right now that you just continue to be with us and bless us this day, Father. And we ask right now that you just go with us. And if there's anything you tell us to ask, please don't cut us right into it. It's in your name we pray, and we thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before the uh, men's choir come with uh, their selection, we want to present our preacher for this morning. But we know he's no stranger to the Pinterest family. He has been up here many, many times. <laughs> But he is our state president of our General Missionary Baptist State Convention of Indiana. And he is the humble and proud pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Amen. So after the men have come, we want to receive the Reverend Dr. Ronald Covington Sr. <laughs>
they couldn't be here today. But I'm glad to be here in GI. Amen. 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 Anybody not glad to come to GI? There's something wrong with you. Amen. Glad to see you. Say, come here. Amen. Always. 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 Well, yeah, I said I'm not going to be long. Uh, if you have your Bibles, will you turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4. I just want to read, begin reading at verse number 1. I'm going to read from the ESV version of the Bible. You can read your version and we're going to end up somewhere around the same place. <laughs> Timothy writes and he says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom. He says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry. Preach this morning from the subject and encouragement to this dynamic pastor. I just want to tell him, keep on preaching. Amen. Just keep preaching. My brothers and my sisters, we are living in a time when preaching is under attack. I am talking about right now. There are so many people who are against preaching and the preacher. There is a disbelief, a disloyalty, and a disconnection when it comes to the preaching assignment. Many people in today's society don't believe and it's a sad commentary. They don't believe in the inspiration and the sufficiency of the Word of God. We're living in terrible times. And, and, and to many, today, preaching is foolishness. Brothers and sisters, we don't have to go far to see what's going on in the world today. Yeah. Our text before us takes place not in a chronos time, which refers to the chronological time, but it takes place in a kairos time, which means a critical period, a critical or opportune time in life, yes. particularly in the life of this giant of a preacher, the Apostle Paul. Yeah. You know Paul. Yeah. Paul, whose name used to be Saul, yeah. before he met Jesus yeah. on the Damascus Road. Yeah. I'm going to say, he, he used to be Saul, yeah. but then he met Jesus. Yeah. On Damascus Road. And when he met Jesus, y'all know what happened? Jesus not only 
state was his name changed. But his life was changed. When he met Jesus, his life gained new meaning. And I'd like to tell you, anytime you come in contact with the Christ, amen, your life will not be the same. And there ought to be some witnesses in here. Amen. When you came in contact, not with Boo, but when you came in contact with the Christ, amen, your life has never been the same. Amen. You know, you know, you know this, Paul. One, the one, the, the one that was born in Tarsus, and one that was educated uh, under the tutelage of Amelia. And this, this Paul that wrote uh, half of the New Testament. You know, Paul, the one that went on three missionary journeys. This, this, this Paul that went from a persecutor to a preacher. You know, Paul, the one that was shipwrecked three times. Three times. And you, you know, and now after going through all that, this same Paul, yeah. amen, now finds himself coming down to the end of his life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This, 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 this is a, a Kairos time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Paul is, is, is facing death. Yes. Coming down to the end of, of his life. And, and what Paul does, he gives some lasting words to his son in the ministry. Yeah. And you know, it, it, anytime that you, you know, when you hear somebody's last words, those words have an importance to them. Yeah. So he, he, he's not basking on the beach, not enjoying the sun, but at the time of the text, Paul is in prison. And brothers and sisters, he's more than, he's really in what we call a dungeon. He's in a, a, cell, a dirty, nasty place. He's in there, and, and he's not only there, but now he, again, he's facing death. So, under those circumstances, he writes, he takes the time out to write to his son, his protege in ministry, yeah. Timothy. He writes, and, and, and brothers and sisters, this, is, this was a serious moment mm -hmm. in the life of Paul and Timothy. Yeah. Serious moment, and the Apostle Paul wanted Timothy to sense the importance of this. And I believe, I believe that just as it was important then, it's equally important now. It was serious, not only because Paul was facing death, but it's serious not only because these were, these were Paul's last words, but brothers and sisters, it was serious because of two other things. And as a matter of fact, three things. First of all, it was serious because there were two divine witnesses in the text here. And secondly, it was because of Jesus appearing. And then third, because Jesus uh, uh, is going to set up his kingdom. It's important, y'all, because first of all, again, because of these two divine witnesses, God and the Lord Jesus Christ is in the text. Of, he says, I charge you, therefore, before these two witnesses, God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. These are two witnesses. He's, he's, he's calling on, on his son, his protege, and charging him in front of God and Jesus Christ. But secondly, because because, because of his appearing, Jesus, my sister, y'all, one day Jesus is going to appear. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus, the first time he came as Savior, yes, but he's coming back as judge. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus will, he will, he will judge the living and the dead. Yeah. Amen. And then thirdly, it's because of the reality of the kingdom. Amen. When all of those that are with Jesus will rule with him forever. And so Paul comes and he gives, he gives Timothy, I mean, yeah, he gives his son a mandate. And this is it. He says to him again, I charge you. I adjure you. And, and, and I do it before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives him, he gives him a mandate to preach. 
Watch this. And he doesn't just give him an option. Right. Amen. He says that I charge you. Right. Amen. I, I charge you. And listen, y'all. And he wasn't telling Timothy to do anything that he wasn't doing himself. Right. You know, sometimes we tell people to do as I say, not as I do. That's wrong, brother. Right. Amen. He was telling him, you do like I have always done. And we know that Timothy, we know that Paul did because he says in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Listen y'all, watch this. He said, whatever you do, he said, I want you to preach. And brothers and sisters, we can do everything we can. We can do all we can in the church. The choir can sing. The ushers can usher. The nurses can nurse. The deacons can deacon. We can feed folk. We can call folk. We can do all of that. But if we fail to preach, then we let God down. I wish I had a witness in here. I don't care what happens in the church. If you don't have some preaching, you just have your meeting. And can I tell you, there's a whole meetings now. But if we're going to please God, Paul said, preach. I wish I had somebody here. And God told me to tell you, pastor, just keep on preaching. Keep preaching, keep preaching. We can do everything, but there has to be a word from the Lord. Because it's only by the word of God that souls going to be saved. I wish I had somebody here. Salvation! 
got me paid. Shame. And then can I tell y'all something else? Can I bust y'all bubble? You don't pay us for preaching. Ain't got no help in here. We were preaching when we didn't have a dime in our pocket. I ain't got no help. You don't pay us for preaching. We know we got our pay coming. It ain't even now. But that ain't our assignment. Do all this other stuff. He said, he said your assignment is to preach. Amen. So, so, Pastor Adams, I just come and pray to keep on preaching. Amen. Keep on preaching because preaching is the explanation of the application of the word. Amen. Preaching, preaching is the, is the proclamation of divine truth. Yes, preaching is exhortation. Yes, preaching is forth telling. Yes, Dr. C. W. Clark said, preaching is not good advice, but it's good news. Be, be ready. Yeah. Stand ready to preach. Yeah. 
got to preach. Amen. When they don't say amen. amen. You know, I feel this is I don't groan so now. I, I used to worry about folks saying amen. amen. But I don't got no older now. I don't care if you say amen. Or I don't care if you say any kind of man. I done made up in my mind. I'm going to praise the word of God. Whether you say amen or don't say amen, I'm going to declare the divine truth by the Lord. Say it, say it, preach. Keep on preaching. You want to be those days. You don't hear his voice. 
ready to kick up the passing and maybe give us an anniversary. Yeah. Thank you.